Maybe you don't have the best PC. Maybe you're trying to record or stream, or maybe you're playing a game that's still in development and isn't completely optimized. <coughs> Vel. In any case, VR is very demanding, and so I'm always looking for ways to improve performance. Timestamps are included, so if you already know about one tip, skip ahead to the next one. And by the end, I'll show you a mod that lets you increase performance by more than 60% without lowering the quality at all. But before you try that, let's make sure we get all the basics out of the way. The best way to measure your performance in a game is your frame time. For Steam VR, you can easily see your frame time by clicking on the menu here in the Steam VR window and hitting display performance graph. What this graph is telling you is how many milliseconds it takes to render a single frame. To hit a consistent 90 FPS, you would need a frame time of 11.1 milliseconds or less. If it takes more than 11.1 milliseconds to render any frames, that's where your FPS will drop below 90 and you'll notice performance issues. You can see a similar but more confusing graph for Oculus games by going to Program Files, Oculus Support, Oculus Diagnostics, and Oculus debug tool.exe. Just open that up and then set the visible HUD to performance. This will display a graph in your headset that tells you your FPS and your headroom. It's slightly more confusing than the Steam VR's performance graph, but you can use either tool to see your actual in-game performance. Now, I recommend jumping into whatever game you play the most and measuring your current performance before implementing any of these tips in this video so that you can see if you get any measurable gain in performance. Personally, I was able to decrease my frame time by more than 60% by going from 10 milliseconds to 4 milliseconds with just one of these tips. So the very first thing that you should check when you're having performance issues is if you have any updates. Make sure your operating system is up to date and then make sure your GPU drivers are all up to date as well. Once all of your drivers are updated, make sure you restart your computer. And even if you didn't update any drivers, it's really important to regularly restart your computer for better performance. Even if you regularly shut off your computer every single night, you still should do a full restart in order to fully kill all processes, clear RAM and clear processor cache. This is because Windows has a fast startup option enabled by default that creates a deep hibernation file in the PC to help it boot up faster. And while it's great for booting up more quickly, it's known to cause issues and weird bugs over time. So if you're having performance issues, restart your computer and see if that helps. Now, Nvidia has some basic settings in the Nvidia control panel that you can mess with to optimize your system. If you're using AMD, they should have similar settings. In the Nvidia control panel, go to manage 3D settings. In the global settings, scroll down to power management mode and change it to prefer maximum performance. Below that, go to texture filtering quality and change that to high performance. There's other settings here that you can mess with, but just adjusting these two settings can give you better performance and won't decrease the quality in any perceivable way whatsoever. Next, Windows comes equipped with an option to use less energy, and as a result, it gives you slightly less performance. You can make sure you're not using this mode by finding your power options in Windows and making sure high performance is selected. Windows also has a built-in option called Windows Game Mode that basically gives the game you're playing priority access to the system's resources. It also stops notifications and updates from interrupting your gameplay. This generally helps a little bit to improve performance, but there are anecdotal stories of it having the opposite effect and decreasing performance, usually from temporary bugs that are quickly resolved in updates. So if you're having bad performance, it's worth trying to see if this setting will affect it one way or the other. To turn it on or off, just type Game Mode into the Windows search bar to find the Game Mode options, and there you can can toggle it on or off. Now, this should go without saying, but close anything you're not using, especially any Chrome tabs, because Chrome is hardware accelerated, meaning that it uses the GPU to run better. Some people go as far as going to the Task Manager to stop Windows Update, going to the Control Panel to stop Windows Defender, and even disabling the Windows Search Indexer. I don't recommend going as far as any of that, because you kind of want Windows Defender running at all times, but any processes or programs that you can close, you should close, so that all of your power goes to the game. Related to that, if you're not using Discord specifically, Specifically, you should shut that down completely and make sure it's not just getting minimized to the tray. I do this by going to my Discord settings, Windows settings, and then turning off minimize to tray. Now, if you are using Discord while playing games, like to chat with your friends, for example, make sure you have hardware acceleration turned off. You can find this in the settings under advanced. Basically, this uses your GPU to make Discord run smoother, which kind of like Chrome means less GPU processing is going to the game, potentially causing performance issues and all that. So turn that off if you have to use Discord while playing games. With Whatever game you're playing, make sure it is the selected window. Basically, just make sure that the last thing you clicked on before going into VR was the game's window on your PC. Some games make it so that the game won't have the full CPU processing when the window isn't in focus. Not all games are like that, especially VR games, but since there's no way to really know, it's a good practice to just make sure your window is the last thing you click on before going into VR. One great way that you can increase performance really easily is by lowering your monitor's resolution to as low as possible. Whenever you're playing a VR game, you're essentially rendering the game two times, one time per eye, and then one of those renders gets thrown onto your PC as a preview window. In some games, the preview window is 
set to auto scale to match your monitor's resolution, in which case you'll be getting less performance if you have a monitor with a higher resolution than your headset. And even if the game doesn't auto scale and it just renders the exact same resolution as your headset, you could still benefit from lowering the resolution if you set it to something lower than your headset's resolution. So for example, if you set your monitor's resolution to the lowest possible resolution, which for me is 800 by 600, you'll get a nice increase in performance than if you just left it at its default 1080p, 2K, or 4K. Again, this is dependent on the preview window options that the developer chooses when creating their game. Some options they can choose use up a lot of performance, while others don't cost hardly anything. In any case, it's really difficult to know what options they're choosing, so if you are having performance issues, it's worth trying just to see if it gives you a little bit more performance. And if you use Virtual Desktop, you can do this automatically anytime your headset connects to your PC by selecting this option here in the Virtual Desktop settings. Otherwise, just right-click on your desktop display settings, and here you can lower the display resolution. Now, if you're a streamer or you're recording videos, you may be tempted to use Steam VR View or Oculus Mirror for your streams and recordings. I don't recommend doing this as having a second preview window greatly decreases your performance and streaming already takes up so much processing, you want to save as much processing as you can. Really, the only time you should use the Steam VR View or Oculus Mirror is if you have so much headroom running the game that you're probably not even watching this video. As long as you're not playing a game with a terrible preview window, like Skyrim for example, just use the default game preview window for your streams and recordings if you're having performance issues. If you're streaming PC games to your Quest 2 through AirLink or Virtual Desktop or even through Oculus Link, you'll always get less performance than if you were using a natively cabled PC VR headset. This is because you're not only rendering the game twice, now you're compressing that game footage to send it over Wi-Fi or USB to the headset. And then specifically with Wi-Fi streaming, depending on how good your router is, you could get some performance hitches that have nothing to do with your PC. For a full guide on how to set up AirLink and Virtual Desktop for the best performance, check out the video in the description. But essentially, you just need a dedicated router in the same room as your Quest and connect it to your PC via Ethernet. Assuming it's a decent router, you'll get decent network performance. Wi-Fi 6 routers work best, and I recommend buying one dedicated for VR streaming and nothing else. Also, lowering the bit rate will increase the performance when streaming over Wi-Fi, so definitely try that if you're having issues. In any case, if you're using specifically Virtual Desktop to stream, then you can see if the performance issues are coming from the PC or from the network by just looking at the performance overlay, which tells you how much latency is coming and from where. If you see spikes in latency from the game, then your PC is having a hard time running the game. If you see more spikes coming from the network, then you know it's a router issue and not your PC. Another tip for playing with Quest, or really any Oculus headset, is to make sure that you play the game in Oculus mode. For Veil, when you hit play on Steam with an Oculus headset, you should see a dialog box asking if you want to play in Steam VR mode, Oculus mode, or Observer mode. Using Oculus mode with an Oculus headset will give you a nice boost in performance since Steam VR isn't running with it, so make sure you choose that when playing Veil. For other games, make sure you have Oculus set as the default runtime, and then purchase and play games through the Oculus app instead of Steam if you want better performance. If you do buy games through Steam, you can use a mod called Open Composite to play those games without actually running Steam VR, which gives you the same performance boost. It's super easy to install, and the download for it will be linked in the description. If you're using AirLink or Virtual Desktop, you can also try one of their versions of Space Warp. Or if you're using a Steam VR headset, you can try their motion smoothing. AirLink uses asynchronous Space Warp, which essentially forces the PC to only render half of the frames while extrapolating the other half. You can turn this on or off in the Oculus Debug Tool, which can be found at Program Files, Oculus Support, Oculus Diagnostics, Oculus Debug Tool.exe. Virtual Desktop uses synchronous Space Warp, which essentially does the same thing, except that the headset is extrapolating the missing half of frames instead of your PC. You can turn this on or off in the Virtual Desktop settings. Steam VR has motion smoothing, which works very similarly, and you can turn it on or off by going to the Steam VR settings and then video settings. All of these work to increase performance, but not without some warping that I personally really don't like. So I usually try to keep all of these settings off, but if you have a really bad setup, it may be worth having them on for smoother performance. Now this should go without saying, but if you're experiencing poor performance, especially after trying everything so far, you should try lowering the in-game settings. You may have a high-end rig and think you should be able to play on max settings, but even with my RTX 3090, Half-Life Alex still recommends that I use high fidelity instead of ultra, so just try lowering everything down a little bit to get slightly better frames. If you're still experiencing performance issues after all that, then you just might not have a good enough PC to render the game at full resolution and frame rate. So the next step would be to reduce the resolution and frame rate. In a second, I'll show you how to reduce the resolution without lowering the quality, but for now, let's reduce the frame rate. If you're trying to hit 120 FPS, lower it to 90, and if you can't hit 90 because your rig is performing that bad, try just hitting 72. A lot of people like to leave the max FPS 
press really high just to see if they can hit it, but this can cause issues. Let's say you have your headset set to 120 hertz and you're hitting around 90 to 100 with a few drops down to 70 or 80. In this case, lowering the max frame rate to 90 will give you some extra headroom to consistently hit 90 all of the time. And then you won't have to deal with weird reprojection issues or stuttering that happens when you drop down to 70 or 80. Hitting a consistent frame rate without stutters is arguably more important than trying to hit a higher frame rate. So just go ahead and set it a little bit lower. 90 FPS is fantastic for your VR and 72 is probably the lowest I'll go. Lowering the resolution will of course make the game look worse. And if that's your only option, go ahead and try that. But both AMD and Nvidia have released their own versions of super sampling called FSR and DLSS respectively, which will allow you to render the game at a lower resolution with the PC upscaling it to the full resolution with their technology. The result is an image that looks almost as good as full resolution, but giving you way more performance. Some games have one of these technologies implemented natively in the game, in which case you just go to your game settings and turn it on if you have a compatible GPU. We made sure to include AMD's FSR with Veil, specifically because FSR is GPU independent. So no matter what GPU you have, even if it's an Nvidia GPU, it will work with FSR and you'll be able to get that performance boost. Using it in Veil, I was able to reduce my frame time in the Armory from 10 milliseconds all the way down to 4 milliseconds. In Veil, we have a couple different levels that you can set it to depending on how much performance you're trying to get, and at the time of making this video, you do need to restart the game for changes to take place if you're playing in Oculus mode. Another way to improve the look with a lower resolution is to use Oculus Link Sharpening. You can activate this in the Oculus Debug tool found in Program Files, Oculus Support, Oculus Diagnostics, and then just make sure that Link Sharpening is set to Enabled. And with that enabled, you should be able to lower the resolution a bit to increase performance without a major difference in the visual look. Now, the last thing I recommend you do to improve your performance is to mess with overclocking settings. Now, many beginners tend to stay away from overclocking because they're worried about messing something up, and that's fine, but MSI Afterburner has some really simple settings that you can adjust if you want to increase your performance without actually overclocking. So download MSI Afterburner, go to the menu settings, and just check unlock voltage control, unlock voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage. And then with that, take the power limit slider and move it all the way up. This will also bring up the max temperature slider, which is fine. But what this is doing is essentially letting your GPU use a little bit more power to do its job. It might run a little bit hotter as a result, so you should also mess with the fan curve to make sure you're giving it plenty of opportunity for cooling. But overall, this is just one little setting, not even overclocking, that gives you a really nice performance boost. Now, if you do want to try overclocking, I recommend finding a good tutorial for MSI Afterburner and following that. But essentially, after boosting the power limit, you'd need to increase the core clock slightly and the memory clock. But again, I recommend following a tutorial so that you know what you're doing and know what to do if you accidentally go too far and end up with stability issues. If after trying all of these tips, you're still getting bad performance, you might have another underlying issue or just might not have a good enough PC to run most VR games. Just remember that games use your GPU and CPU to render the frames, and depending on your setup, you could be bottlenecked in one area and not the other. We've had people come to us wondering why they can't run our game on their 3080 Ti, but they're using a CPU from 2011. So while their GPU is hitting frame times just fine, your system has to wait for the CPU to catch up. Also make sure you're installing your games onto an SSD drive if that's an option. If you don't have an SSD or M.2 drive, go out and get one. This will greatly improve performance, especially for graphically heavy games with lots of textures and assets like open world games. Trying to run these games on a slow old hard drive will cause major performance issues, even if you have the greatest GPU and CPU. This is because your system will be waiting around for several gigs of data to go in and out of the VRAM from an old slow drive. Using a faster drive like SSD or M.2 gets rid of this issue completely. Another important thing to keep in mind is cooling. If your PC is getting too hot, your system will cut performance to cool it down. So make sure that you have plenty of fans. And if you're using a laptop, go out and get a cooling pad as this is the biggest issue for laptop users. Now, if you want to upgrade parts of your PC or if you're buying a VR ready PC for the first time, check out this video that we made covering the basic PC parts and what you'll need for a decent VR gaming setup. And if you have any other tips for improving performance, leave them down below in the comments and maybe you'll be able to help someone else out.